got to clamp down for boring the uh, leg holes in the seat and uh, uh, let me bring my legs over here and I'll show you for those of you who are very observant you'll see that these are not the same legs that I turned in the turning segment because I stole those for a continuous arm chair I made a few weeks ago and then when I got ready to return them I thought well hold it I want to do the blunt arrow foot or I think sometimes it's called a ball and cylinder turning on these I like the little extra weight that it adds to this comb back plus it's the it's the same leg that's in the photo that's at the starts out every every video so uh, so anyway so I, I switched on these but these are the rear ones like right there they're shorter they're an inch shorter I'll put those the front ones to the side so uh, let's see I got the bevel square set up at 19 degrees I'm going to bore that front leg and there's my siding angle so this is the resultant angle right there put on these things so I can maybe see where that hole is uh, oh let me show you what kind of drill bit I'm using here this is a, uh, a cook's pattern bit uh, it's a bit, just to my knowledge, was made prior to the Civil War and it must have just fallen out of favor because it's difficult to maintain and to sharpen. But uh, it, it sort of drills like a combination of a spoon bit and an auger bit. So it's got the lead screw that a auger has to pull it through, but yet it, it cuts in a, much the same way that, a, or not exactly the same way that a spoon does. Uh, it takes about half the torque that an auger bit takes. You can enter at a steep angle that you can't do <clears throat> with an auger bit, which is really advantageous here. I can enter at that 19 degree angle instead of starting up a little bit and trying to pull back, which you would do with a, uh, with a typical auger bit. And, uh, but you could drill this hole with, with any bit you got. Spoons work well here or brad points or whatever. It, this is just the one that, that I like to use. So, so there I'm set up right there. Mm. And then I'll just side across, and that looks good. It also exits uh, fairly clean. And if you can see the entry hole, pretty nice too. <coughs> change the bevel square for the rear leg. <clears throat> so this one's at uh, 25 degrees, siding angles way on up here. I can get that before I even look across through there is I can look over to that side and pretty much get the angle. I, I guess it's because I've drilled about 10,000 of these. But. <clears throat> well, got the holes bored. Now I'm going to flip it over and taper for the uh, leg tenons from the other side. So here, so let's draw our 
sight lines. spot there so I can see it. And so I got my six degree reamer and yeah, let's see so there's one of my one of my legs. So this is 25 degrees. I've set the bevel square up at 22 and that's because I want to be able to put it right up against the reamer there. The reamer is six degrees, half of that's three. I subtract three and I'm able to read right off the front of, of that reamer. And then for my siding angle, I line up the point of the reamer, the square, and that point. Three points and you can just nail it there. So that's a good place to start right there. Check it, see where I am. I gotta go left and I gotta go up. So I'll take it and clean it. And left and up. So overshot oh, that's not perfectly square. Let's get that back there. Now let's look at it. Overshot it a little. Need to go right. I'm dead on it right there. So a little bit right. See, splitting it there and got her there. So let's see what our depth is now. Grain orientation that I talked about. The other segment, growth rings perpendicular to the long wood fibers of the mortise piece. And now let's check my depth. So I'm going up to the uh, stretcher mark. I've got a score line there for the stretcher. And that's where I'm going to, so I've got about uh, oh, half an inch, five eighths, like that left to, left to go. So now I've got the angle I want, so let's see if I can maintain that. And I'm on it there. I can go up a hair. Depth. And I'm about a full oh, eighth shy, I guess, so just a turn or so. Now, <clears throat> one thing you see is that I, I left the knob on the end of the turnings, and I, uh, I try to leave any wood on that I possibly can until the last moment when I have to cut it off because. If this taper is not fitting just right, I can chuck it back in the lathe and tweak it just a little bit. This one, as you can tell by the squeaking this, the one's fitting, fitting real well. Uh, so, let's see. A little turn. That ought to do it. Right there. Okay, so I'm on it. Now, I always do things in sequence and I number the same way every time. Uh, it doesn't matter how you do it or how you number, just, it just gets you a set way of doing it and it will expose uh, mistakes that you might have. So, my right rear is always, and it's as you're sitting in the chair right and left, my right rear is always leg number, number one. Uh, and I number it right there, just a tick mark, a tick mark there, and that's uh, that's one. It also also always number it on the inside of the leg, so I know where the inside is. You can number it on the outside, and you know that's the outside, but I do mine on the inside, uh, and it's one. I'll go uh, counterclockwise two, and then three, and then four. Uh, so I'll 
taper the other ones now. All right, as you see, I've got three of them done, and I'm uh, going to show you how I'm tapering the last one. And uh, If you didn't see the segment where I did the arm sports, then you can go back and look at that, and I'll talk a little bit more about the, uh, the reamer. I use a, a six-degree reamer made out of a compass saw blade here and sharpened like a, a cabinet scraper. So uh, uh, I prefer the, uh, this angle to the 11-degree to the angle. Um, let's see, the front legs are an inch longer in this chair and that's the, you can see the difference right there and that's to give me the uh, uh, cant that the seat that the seat needs leaning back uh, with, uh, with my other legs where I just have a taper all the way down you can either make those shorter or you can just cut them shorter whenever you're level in the chair but on this, with the blunt arrow foot, you can't. You have to nail it just, just exact. Uh, I number them the same every time, and I do them the same every time. I start with the right rear, and I number that number one, two, three, four. And I follow sequences like that all the way through the chair because it exposes mistakes if you do it the same, the same way every time. Uh, so right rear as you sit as you sit in the chair. So I number them even on the inside, and it's also the the uh, the tick mark. So this hole is 19 degrees. I've set the reamer at 16, so I can put it up. I've set the bevel square at 16. So I can put it up in front of the reamer and read off the front of it. So the reamer is 6 degrees, half of that's 3, you subtract the 3 from the 19 degree angle and you have 16 and I can read it right off of the front. So that will be that angle, i got to go up. And for this angle I line up 3 points, the top of the reamer, the square, and the end of the siding line right there. And uh, i got to go right and up. So that is on it, and I need to come back right here. I overshot it a hair. Uh, that one's still on. So it doesn't take much to, to move it. All I do is just kind of breathe heavy that way. Uh, now we'll check the, the depth. I can see that we've got a little ways to go. Got about a little over a quarter inch closer than what I thought. Clean it. And before I turn any, I'm going to check. We're right on it there. And I've got to go up. Okay. So, holding that one good. So they're all green. This one's number four. And now before I take the legs out, I'm going to measure for the stretchers.